Tarika, my girl, you are here with me <laughs> live in Stanford in studio. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so excited about that. You know what else I'm excited about or was excited about yesterday? To wake up to some news that Asia Wilson not only received her third MVP, but was indeed unanimous, Tarika. I wasn't sure if the voters would get it right. I didn't know if we would have some second place voters. Oh, I, I knew we weren't going back to fourth place. Lord, they didn't want them problems. They already saw what them problems was going to bring. <laughs> but it's the news that I woke up to. I was actually waking up and the news was already out. Yeah. Um, the rollout was a little confusing, but at the end of the day, the news of the day was that Asia Wilson is the league's second unanimous MVP. I, so I am one of the 60 plus members of the voting media. 67. And <laughs> I knew where my vote was going, right? And so I had no idea if anybody else was gonna try to do something random. Um, however, I can say that this was right. Like this, this was one of those no brainer situations, right? And at times it, you kind of felt bad because at times you would say to yourself, this person is having an incredible season. Nafisa Collier, an incredible season. Beginning of the season, I said, God, Erica Hamby's having a great season. This is, this is interesting. This is wild. Like, and none of it mattered. I mean, it mattered, but as it relates to MVP voting, we all knew that by the time we got to mid-June, it felt like this was Asia's to lose. Yeah. And she continued to keep her foot on the gas and she continues to block out the noise. She, to me, has given me the best single individual season that I have ever seen in the WNBA. And I've been watching this game quite literally since the Liberty and the Sparks tipped off in 1997. Yeah. So to say That's to say that really wow. and, and honestly mean it means a lot. There is quite literally nothing else that she can do net. Like championships, every single level. High school, got it. College, got it. WNBA, got it. Olympic gold medals, got it. Like there's literally nothing else that she can do. And I was talking to a friend of ours, Christina Williams, and I said to her, after the game, she said, well, when she was receiving her you know, MVP information, she said, you know, someone asked, is there another level that like, is there anything left? And she said, sure, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I think she said that on Good Morning America. Good, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, sure, why not? <laughs> What? Like, you have to fear. <laughs> you have to fear someone that's so motivated that after they have achieved everything possible, they still think that there is another level of greatness left. And that's Asia. Yeah, well, well first of all, I love this red suit. She's, she, she, did it. she just <laughs> sis ate it all the way ate up. Ate it. <laughs> ate it. No crumbs, no crumbs. Nothing. Listen, like, no notes. She looks <laughs> amazing and. I don't know what I'm more amazed by, Asia's on-court play or the leadership and humility that she continues to display. Yep. She won the MVP and wrote each of her teammates a letter, right? She thanked them yep. in her acceptance speech. She has me in tears all the time, every, every other time. day. Yep. I mean, I just marvel at her, you know, and, you know, Christina, how you mentioned our mutual friend, you know, I talked about it with her recently on her show, but the crown Asia wears is so heavy. And so when she's vulnerable with us and she lets us see that raw emotion, mm -hmm. um, it really just touches me. It just, you know, like it yeah. really takes my breath away and I'm, this couldn't happen to a better person, a more deserving person. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for her. And I just look forward to what she's gonna do because she's young. She's still so young, Tarika. Eight. I just, <laughs> I can't see her going the rest of her career never winning another MVP. Right, or never winning another championship. Right. Or, <laughs> or never winning a player of the year. year. Or whatever it Or another be. gold medal. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, Stop. She's in her prime. And 
You have just got to, you said it a moment ago about Diana Taurasi and it applies here. You have got to appreciate greatness while we are still able to witness it. You've got to appreciate greatness while people are still around and still able to accept their flowers. Because the truth is, we take for granted sometimes as fans, and maybe not you or, or me personally, but fans take for granted sometimes that these players are amazing at their craft. You know what I mean? People will brush off an Alyssa Thomas triple-double because she has so many. But triple-doubles are hard to get. Yeah. Okay? They are not easy to get, when you, especially when you don't have any labrums. Okay? So there's that. Playing 20 years in one city for one team, having won three championships, that is hard to get. It is not easy to do. And yet people take it for granted that Diana yeah. Taurasi has done that. You look at Asia Wilson, getting a thousand points in a season, in a single season. is hard to yep. do. Like people, it's why people don't do it because it is difficult. Being able to lead the league in all three statistical categories with the exception of in, in points, rebounds and blocks, that is hard to do. And, and I just think that there are moments where people just don't really take into consideration all of the things that have to go right in order for you to achieve those kinds of accomplishments and still, to your point, remain humble and still do all the outside things you do. You know, like write a book, I like know. design a shoe, like have apparel coming out, like, you know what I mean? And have good health. And have good health. I mean, the game, uh, <laughs> the one game she missed this season was her first in like, a very long time. Absolutely. I mean, she does not miss games. She doesn't miss games. It's just you you really have to under you really have to contextualize how how much of an anomaly stuff like this actually is. So, when I see the disrespect or when people act like it's no big deal, I really feel like they don't understand sports. Like, cause it is, it is a, some of the records that Asia set were not just WNBA records. They were things we had not seen in men's or women's professional basketball. And that league's been around 70 plus years. You get what I mean? Yeah. So I know I don't have to tell you, but folks just really got to appreciate greatness while we have it, while we're witnessing it, because we don't know if we'll ever see these kinds of performances again. Yeah. And we got to witness her greatness on display last night, mm -hmm. right? Because the Las Vegas Aces played the Seattle Storm, and I think this was one of the games people were expecting to be competitive, which is normal. A 4-5 matchup usually is. Yep. And so many stars on both teams. Yeah. And Seattle, down Ezzy, came in and sort of punched Vegas in the mouth a little bit. I don't know if they were a little hungover from Asia's celebration, <laughs> you know, getting her MVP. But, you know, she started the first half shooting one for eight. Yep. You know, um... But then, in the second half, Asia kicked it into another gear. The yep. Aces also just went into another gear by that fourth quarter. Yep. But she, 8 for 12 in the second half. Mm -hmm. She finished the game with 21 points after starting 1 for 8. It's like, in that third quarter, she could not miss. She just came out, oh, yep. I'll make this shot, I'll make this shot. And you know what? I'll knock down this 3, too. Yep. It was incredible. But that wasn't the only incredible performance yesterday. It was such a great sight to see the point guard yes. in the playoffs. Chelsea Gray, because people have been playing with Chelsea Gray's name this year, and Chelsea was tremendous, Tarika. 16 points, five of 10 from the field, one of two from three, two boards, but it was the seven assists. And it's the way she, it's the way she mm. does her assists, right? Like, her passing is elite, but it's her vision, sometimes where she gets these passes mm -hmm. into. Uh, just how did you see that? And it's just, she hits shots, she passes. she Her reads are just right at the right moment in time yeah. when Vegas needs it. It was just a thing of beauty to watch. It was vintage Chelsea Gray last night. It was much needed because we started to see coming into the last couple of weeks of the season, even actually before then, if we back up a little bit, Right before the playoffs, um, excuse me, right before the Olympic break started, we actually started to see a little bit of the chemistry that this team was missing because Chelsea was just getting back into the swing of things. And then you go on this two-week Olympic break, you kind of say to yourself, do they get that back? Well, a wise man once told me that 
hot teams get hot at the right time. And that's the team that you want going into the postseason. So it's not about records. It's about who's playing the best at the best time of season. And right now, that is how you continue to build that fire. They were down, but they turned it up. And not only on the offensive end, but on the defensive end. They held Seattle to two points in the fourth in the quarter. Fourth quarter. Yes. This is a Seattle team that has Skylar Diggins-Smith, Jewel Lloyd, Neka Agumake, Gabby Williams and Jordan Horston, who I absolutely love in her sophomore season, who's been coming off the bench for them and been amazing. And that was not a field goal. That it was free throws. Two points. Free throws. I mean, they really they once they contained NECA, they were they were doubling it was her. A, it was it was and, it. Yeah, the offense just it just went like that to me is how you know it's real. You 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 showed up offensively to get back in it, but you definitely put your big girl defense on, and there <laughs> that was great. But this is why I also will say that Seattle maybe just could be the other team that can force a game three. They do know how to score. They do have a Neka Agumake. Like they, they do have pieces that can really show up in big moments and play. Um, and they do have players that have championship experience. So it is interesting to me um, to see what Seattle team is going to show up. Um, but if there is any other team that I think could possibly force, although when Asia starts and comes out and plays like a woman on a mission, she's hard to stop, yeah. as we saw in the second half. So I don't know. Um, obviously, obviously we don't know, but I do believe that Seattle may be the other team that yeah. could possibly force a game three back in Seattle. I agree with you. A quiet game for Jewel Lloyd too. They're going to have some reinforcements coming in, like I mentioned, like yeah. as these, so that could really help in a game two. True. Uh, I cannot let us finish this conversation though, without just giving Tiffany Hayes some love. Tip was mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. in yesterday's game. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 points off the bench, yep. 20 points and five assists. That stat line never occurring in the postseason ever. Just a lot of history being made yesterday. Her mom for the first time yes. flew to, see her. to come see her playing. She talked about her mom being her coach growing up. Yep. Tip has been amazing for the Aces, came out of retirement for the Aces and just, it, her finishing, she's so crafty around the rim. Yep. She just gets by people. She's so fun to watch. Yep. And on a night when Kelsey Plum was quiet, she really stepped up and helped the Aces secure this win. And as you mentioned, have been doing so all season long. Nat, when I go in retirement, don't ask me to come back out for nothing. Because <laughs> I ain't got it. I got nothing for you. I don't have any type of takes, no analysis, no contributions. I've got nothing for you. I'm watching the game solely. For her to be able to still play this way means one of two things. Either A, she really wasn't fully retired, right? right? Or B, the way and the style of basketball that this Aces team plays is so conducive to the skill set that she has that even after retirement, she can still be such a contributor. I love that. I love that for tip. Yeah. Really looking forward to game two. I cannot wait. Tarika, thank you so much for joining me. WNBA playoffs are here. Tune in, y'all.